Skyrim is such a massive game that even after 12 years since its release date, it still has a ton of stuff that people don't realize you can do. Hey folks, it's Nizzy, and today on Full Damage, we'll be going over 9 overlooked mechanics in Skyrim that'll surely get you playing again. Number 1. The Black Market It's well known that all the best armor can't just be bought off shelves. The Dragonbone, Stalrim, and Daedric armors all require you to have a very high level of smithing. At least, that's the lie people have been told for years now. The truth is that Daedric armor, arguably the best armor set in the game, can be purchased from a very special vendor. After hunting down the Black Book known as Untold Legends, one of three powers you can receive from the text is the Black Market. This lesser power allows you to summon the Dramora Merchant, a portable vendor that sells an assortment of Daedric items, including being one of the only vendors to sell Daedric gear. And, though being able to buy Daedric gear is no small feat, this demonic merchant is more uses than meets the eye. Along with having an arsenal of Oblivion's finest craftsmanship, this merchant also keeps 2,000 gold handy, meaning that if you have a heavy load and can't quite make it back to town in time, this pocket demon will happily take it off your hands. If you want to take this a step further, then you can purchase the fence skill and start selling your ill-gotten gains on the fly. Number 2. Interactive Bugs Bugs are well known in Skyrim. They're rampant, found all across the map, and typically have six legs, in case you thought I was talking about the other kind of bugs. And most notable of these critters are the butterflies. The wings of these wondrous little insects provide the ingredients for various useful potions. But people will hardly ever bother thanks to how annoying it is to capture these damn things. Collecting these butterfly wings amounts to beelining it towards them and chasing the insects through roads, bushes, and forest, all while mashing the interactum button like your life depends on it. Well, if you've ever thought that there's surely a better way of going about this, you'd thankfully be right. Sometime after the game was released, players discovered that butterflies, glowbugs, and other flying insects were much more interactive than meets the eye. That's because, like any other animal, these critters can be hit by a weapon and would realistically react by dropping dead on the floor. This makes collecting butterfly wings much easier, as like most other problems in Skyrim, you can now just slice it away with your sword. And if they still get out of your reach, then a well-placed shout or spell can also do the trick. Number 3. Interactive Shopping Back in 2018, everyone was wowed by the level of detail that was put into Red Dead Redemption 2. From the animations to the dynamic NPCs, Immersion was Red Dead 2's bread and butter. One such feature that gained popularity was how items were bought. Where every other game, including Skyrim, would have you go into a menu, Red Dead lets players buy items straight from the store shelves. Many people have found this incredible, but if you ask me, I'm not all that impressed. That's in no small part as Skyrim doing a very similar thing several years prior. Going to any store and trading with the merchant will still force you into a menu, yes, but if you buy an item that you see on the shelf, you'll notice that it's now gone from the shelf and into your pockets. Number 4. For a 12-year-old game, Skyrim takes a lot of things into consideration when it comes to death. City dwellers who meet their untimely deaths, which I'm sure you had nothing to do with, won't just despawn into the abyss. Instead, a place in the local Hall of the Dead will be made for their loved ones to mourn and for you to pillage. Not only does this little touch let you loot whatever you forget to off the person who came to their untimely demise, but it can also answer year-long questions about the fate of certain characters. The most popular of these is Sadia, whose quest led to huge debates on who to side with. But despite many people arguing that the Alakir warriors seem like decent enough folks who would totally stick to their word and bring her back to Hammerfell unharmed, we can discover that that was a big fat lie, as we can find Sardia's urn in Whiterun's Hall of the Dead shortly after the mission. Number 5. I'm sure we've all been there. You pick up one too many items and find yourself over-encumbered, and with no stores in sight, you do the next best thing and drop everything on the ground. It may sound like a harmless act on paper, but if you were to do this in built-up cities and markets, chaos may soon follow. This is because NPCs will react to the valuable loot you've carelessly dumped on the floor. Some will do the courteous thing and kindly give the item back to you. The more selfishly inclined citizens will keep the loot for themselves, 
and if there are two or more people who want your loot to be theirs, then a brawl might ensue. And not only are these hilarious to watch, they can get very ugly very fast. A simple throw of the fist can quickly escalate into using weapons and magic, and this harmless scuffle has suddenly turned into a massacre. Number 6. Where most fantasy RPGs will have most players favoring the sword and shield, Skyrim is a bit of a blank sheep in this regard. Thanks to many developers on Skyrim coming from Looking Glass Studios, the developers of the Thief games, Skyrim's stealth mechanics were massively overhauled from Oblivion to the point where stealth builds became massively overpowered and dominated the meta. But if there's one thing that turns players off from going sneaky-beaky, it's how much slower the game becomes. Not only is your build reliant on remaining undetected, but you're also going to be moving slower than a snail. However, no limitation in Skyrim can't be exploited. One of the skills in Block is known as Block Runner. As described, this skill enables you to run much faster while blocking with a shield. Although this was initially intended to make blocking a more feasible playthrough, crafty players however discovered that this skill merely works by increasing your movement speed while blocked. And so, by holding up your shield while crouching, you sneak as fast as you would if you were walking. A similar exploit also works with the Ranger perk, which does the same thing while you have your bow drawn. So, you can say goodbye to the one thing that was holding stealth builds back and truly embrace the brokenness of this system. Number 7. Though it may be the meta, stealth in Skyrim can sometimes be a little too frustrating to handle. This is especially true when it comes to pickpocketing. Sure, by the endgame, you could pickpocket someone's organs without them ever batting an eye, but up until that point, pickpocketing is no more than a random dice roll. I mean, sure, you could quick save like everyone else, but where's the fun in that? Luckily, there's a sneaky mechanic that was left for players to discover. Paralysis is one of the most useful effects in the game. Not only can it give you some much-needed breathing room during a fight, but it leaves the recipients of the effect powerless against your whims. But before you go and use your new toy to try out all the sick things that have been marinating in your head, you should have a look at what's in their pockets. That's because enemies who are hit with paralysis will have a 100% chance of being successfully pickpocketed. Not only does this make their loot free for the taking, but it's also some free pickpocketing experience that'll come in handy when you need to steal from someone a little more discreetly. Number 8. If someone were to ask a random group of Skyrim players what the most useless mechanic in the game was, I would guess that 99% would say cooking. And for the most part, they'd be right. Hardcore mode aside, cooking is a time-consuming activity that, in return, gives heavy healing items that are far worse than the default healing spell you get at the beginning of the game. However, keen-eyed players have been able to give this redundant mechanic some use, and it's all thanks to vegetable soup. Whereas most foods you can cook do nothing but restore a minuscule amount of your health, this soup made from cabbage, tomato, and leek is unique. Like all other food items, vegetable soup does heal. However, it has the bonus of giving you one stamina per second for 12 minutes. This might sound pretty anticlimactic, but in reality, it's one of the most useful consumables in the game. This is all thanks to the power attack system, which requires at least one stamina to enact, and thanks to the vegetable soup's aforementioned ability, you can stagger your enemies with power attack after power attack for 12 minutes straight. It makes this humble meal vital for melee characters, but more importantly, it makes a two-handed build far more viable, as you can now stunlock your enemies until they meet their doom. Number 9. Although a lot of these entries do let you be crafty with your enemies, none let you turn into a godlike being that gives Talos a run for his money and it all has to do with the gloriously broken destruction cloaks, and those of you who prefer to master the blade are missing out. These cloak spells cast an aura that dishes out your choice of fire, ice, or shock damage to all enemies in your vicinity. On its own, these are already pretty powerful spells, but with the help of dual casting and potions of fortify destruction, we can make these spells go from adept level spells to weapons of mass destruction. Abusing alchemy long enough will also let you fortify your destruction to ridiculous limits, and since the effect of fortify destruction potions to destruction clothes is increasing the area of effect, you can play out your Thanos power fantasy and turn entire cities to dust within seconds. Subscribe to fall damage, you milk drinker.